Well, hello everybody. How are you today? I'm doing fairly well because you know what? The sun's actually out today and it's getting warm. So yippee. I hope you can get outside and enjoy it some if it's sunny where you are. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today, um, I've started design, designing the quilting for another client quilt. So you saw me working on this quilt. I'll get back here. In my last video. And um, so you see the designs here. There's the, the sun design I came up with and the birds. So I wanted to talk through my design process with you a little bit so you can see. Um, maybe it'll help you just kind of when you are working on your own design process, you know, just different ways your mind can go to maybe help with inspiration a little bit. So the first thing I do, I hang up the quilt top on my design wall in my studio and take a photo of it. And then I load that photo into my iPad and onto my Procreate program on my iPad. Um, it was like 10 bucks and so worth it. And I only use like a very little bit of the um, elements that you can use on it. Um, so you can create different folders in Procreate, they call them stacks. That's just what they like to call them. And so I have this one client, her name is Terry. She's wonderful. Um, and these are the quilts, some of the quilts she has sent me that I have worked on designs here in my Procreate app. So to load a photo in, once you have loaded it onto your device, you go over here to where it says photo and it will bring up your Look at there's all those all my wonderful photos. It brings up your photo booth and you just select the ones you want. I'm gonna hit cancel here because I already have the photo I want. And it will bring it up here into your app. So the next thing you do is just tap on that picture and voila, you are ready to go. What I try to remember do to do first every time is up here, these little two looks like two pages. That's the layers feature. So what I like to do first is to add my first layer. So you just hit the little plus sign that'll add in a layer. Uh, because when it loads in, you'll see background color and then there'll be layer one. So any drawing, anything you do will be on like the actual photograph. And I like to keep that intact because it makes it easier for when I make changes later on. So then I will add one layer. So in here, that's my layer two. You tap the icon, it goes away. So one of the fun things about this app, you can zoom and zoom and turn and do all that fun stuff. Um, so the way I have mine set up, it's two fingers to pinch or move. And so if I rub with my finger, it doesn't do anything. But if I use my Apple Pencil, voila, there it is. So it helps to prevent any accidental smudges or, you know, you like you bump with your hand and it won't make a mark. Only with your pencil. It's very helpful. Okay, so one of the first things I do, I will go through, um, for this one, since I am echo quilting around these basic design elements, I've decided that, you know, the, the pink kind of, I don't want to say stripes, but you know, the, the pink elements, that's one element I want to separate and then the white spots, that's the other one I want to separate. So I will, I will be echo quilting around those. So I went in and just drew those on this layer. Um, I used a gray color for the white parts and then kind of a bright red for the red parts. Uh, the way I choose colors for when I'm drawing in here is um, I want it to be so that I can see it still but kind of close-ish to what I'm gonna use in the quilt. So you kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like in the quilt. But um, if I you know, chose like a pink, like the color of the fabrics, then I wouldn't be able to see the drawings on here. So I wanted it to be a color that's bright enough to still see the drawings. And same with the gray. So I can still see the gray on the white, but when I quilt it out, I'll actually use a white thread, most likely. Okay, so first I do, so I draw those basic shapes. Um, and one of the nice features of Procreate is if you're like drawing a straight line, like you draw down and you hold it, 
Aw, it straightens it out for you. So you don't have to worry about being like super perfect because it will do that for you. Same with curves. If I kind of follow that curve and then I hold it, it says, oh, look at that. Hmm, it's a curve. So um, a nice, nice fun feature. Okay, so let's move on. And there's, if you're really interested in Procreate, there's some really, really great YouTubes out there to um, learn a lot more. And I need to watch them over again because I used it. I only used a few features, and so those features I know fairly well, but others I don't know so much. Anyway, so after I do that, I go up here and I create the next layer. So let's tap that, and let's see what I did there. So in this layer, uh, my idea, uh, let's look at the flower. I was thinking with the flower, I was looking around, what I do, I look at the other fabrics that are in there. Um, the person who pieced this quilt, she chose her fabrics for a reason, or he. I haven't quilted for any men yet, but I would be happy to. Um, the person chose those fabrics for a reason. Sometimes it's just the color, but a lot of times there's something else that speaks to them. So I like to look at the other elements that are in those fabrics. So looking at this one, I see, let's move over here, it's not drawn on. This flower really speaks to me. Um, and then there's these little frilly and curlies over here. And there's a few different fabrics that have leaves in them. And um, it's hard to see it here, but this fabric is flowers as well. There's more flowers, they're a little looser. Um, and then there's like little fan shapes, more leaves. And so I, I take all of that in and start thinking, okay, how do I want to work these elements into what, um, into the design for this quilt? So, uh, looking at those flowers, I'm like, okay, I really like, would like to bring the look of that flower into the center here. And so I went through and just kind of sketched it out a little bit and said, okay, you know, I like where that's going. And then I started looking at the bird ish shapes as well because I want to kind of keep that feeling going because it's still kind of you know I mean you look at the shape and it's like oh yeah that looks like a bird it still looks like a bird to me but I don't want it to be the same as the yellow quilt because this quilt is very different the, the fabrics are very different it has a different feel um, so what felt right was incorporating some of these swirlies into the bird so I said okay so I started working with a couple of different shapes for kind of the head and the tail area. So this one, you know, I kind of did that little echo thing there. It's like, mm, I don't know about that. And then this one I did more of an elongated shape, which I kind of liked a little more. And then tried a different type of a little swirly there. Um, so it's like, well, okay, those, there's two ideas that I can work off of. So next, I went in and worked some more on the flowers. So um, I usually, when I do a shape, you know, I'll, I'll echo it. Um, that's one of the first things I'll do because it helps the um, draw the eye into the design. You know, it helps that element pop a little bit. So I, I did that, and then I just started playing with some other shapes. Um, so like the these little you know spiky things around the flowers I'm like well how can I incorporate those so I started drawing some different things there and playing with some and you know it's kind of yeah maybe and you know and some leaves there and you know it didn't feel yeah it, it wasn't quite there so I took that layer out and I did a different one so then I played some more and said ooh, you know what this feels you know I kind of like this a little better I took those little, you know, those specific spikies out and I kind of rounded it out a little more, did a little more of a swirly and leaves up there. And that felt like something that I could work with a little bit more. That felt a little more cohesive to me. So from this point, I am going to move over to the quilt top and my clear acrylic sheet. And I'll show you what I do next. Okay. Ta-da! So what I did was I came over here with my, oops, sorry about that, my clear plexiglass P3 
piece here that I have tape all around the edges. There's two reasons for that tape. Um, one, it makes it easier to see where they are for when you're lifting and stuff, but also it helps to give you a visual point to say, hey, don't draw over that because you don't want to go onto the client's quilt at all or your own quilt top, whichever one you're working on. Um, so with that always being in the back of my mind, um, one of the types of pens I use is the Crayola Ultra Washables. Um, it's just that little extra peace of mind. So if a little bit does happen to run off for, you know, just whatever weird reason, it'll be easy to take it out. Um, but I also do use the, the Expo markers a little bit as well. Um, I kind of mix both in there. The, um, the Expos obviously wipe off right away really easily. Whereas um, the Crayola Ultra Cleans, um, you have to get them a little wet to get them wiped off. But uh, they do come off easily, but just not quite as easily. So when I want to use both of them, what I do, I will use the Crayola marker to do my kind of background marks, the things that I know I'm not going to change. So for this one, that means my echo lines. I did each of those. And then I also marked the um, kind of the the cross and straight lines um, that I wanted for to um, to use as a reference for my flower. And that brings me to one of the wonderful tools that I used. This is Ultimate Stencil. Let's see, you see there, there we go, by Cindy Needham. Um, she has many great stencils and I've just started using them and really like them. So I lined up, as you can see, um, the piecing in this quilt, you can see the, in the white parts, they come to, there's four pieces kind of that come to the center part there, which make it, makes it a lot easier to line it up. So I lined it up like so, and then I used my marker to mark the up and down lines, the side to side, and then the two diagonals. And then I also used it to mark the innermost circle um, just little dashes. And then I also did dashes. I found where kind of the echo would be that kind of quarter inch in from this seam line here, because I knew I would be echoing around. And so I also marked um, little, those little lines there, you can see them there, to mark that quarter inch as well, just to help give me a reference point. Um, so that was all the marks I did there. Let's see. Oh, no. And then I also did when, um, so I knew I wanted to do these flower shapes, these flower petal shapes, but I wanted the insides to all be the same distance from the center. And so I chose a point kind of oh, like halfway ish. I'm like, well, what, what point feels about right? So I can get a nice shape to them. And so on those off spots you can see here I just marked a little dot in each of those spots so let's move that off to the side all right so what I did next working with the flower um, as, as you saw on the design before um, there was just the circle in the center and then I did the petals so as I was drawing that, I did the petals and I did the echo. I did that center circle and I said, oh, that feels like a lot of empty space. I, you know, I need to put something in that space because it's just a little too much. So then I decided, well, let's see if we pull down the petals all the way down on the sides, that'll be nice. And then I always like a little divider in the center, either one or two. When I get to quilting, we'll see if I like the one or the two. Um, it, it depends. They both give different dimensions to it. Um, the next thing I did was working on these other parts. So um, on the iPad, what I had done was a, you know, that kind of squiggly line out here. And then I did a little leafy thing. Um, I started to play with that a little bit here and it just didn't feel right. It's like, yeah, I, I just don't, I'm not liking that so much. So then I started playing with just different bringing out different swirls with some leaves. And I like that a lot more. It's, it's 
doesn't feel as um, cluttered maybe. It just has a, a nice, a little smoother to it. Um, so then I did another one here and just playing with different sizes of the swirls, sizes of the leaves, um, how many swirls there are. And then I decided, yeah, I don't really like it when there's the two swirls. I think I like it better when there's one swirl and then a leaf, kind of the alternating, um, the odd number feeling to it. Um, and then, you know, maybe two leaves up there, maybe one big, one little, you know, or those are all things that I can vary as I go through. Uh, the other thing I was working on, it's a little hard to see it, but I also drew in kind of the bird shape here. Oh, let's see if I lift it up, if you can see it a little better. There we go, if we put it over the white. Let's put it over the white just so we can see it a little easier. Okay, so on the iPad, I, I did, you know, kind of the center thing and I like the long elongated there. Um, and then I did that little hook there and, you know, I did those little hook shapes there, which I really like. You can see, um, you know, do four. And then the fifth one, I go the opposite direction to kind of fill in that little space in the edge. Um, on the drawing, I did, I did those, but then around this part, I just did some straight lines. And once again, it's like, eh, I'm just not feeling that. That doesn't seem quite right. Um, and so looking at the other fabrics again, I noticed this one again. Can you see it over here? Those little fan, almost little feathery shapes there. I said, oh, okay, I really wanna incorporate those in. And so I put those here at the top. And then looking at it some more, I'd had this shape on both sides. And again, it's like, oh, it just, it doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't fill the space well enough. And so then I tried with you know, echoing these same kind of feathers up there. And I like that a lot better. So I think that's the direction I'm gonna go with that one. Um, so that's the basic design elements and how I came up with them for this quilt. So next I will be deciding uh, which pink I want to use. I have a few different pinks to choose from. Um, I'll likely use white for the background because if I had like a really pale pink, I might use that, but mm, I don't, but I also like the white and you know, just how that adds texture. Um, so those will be my next steps for this quilt and then we'll be rocking and rolling. Uh, and that is all I have for you today. I hope this has helped out you with your own, you know, quilting design struggles and maybe helped you see, you know, um, things a little differently, you know, how you can use different shapes in the fabrics, kind of bring those in, into your own designs. Um, so I hope you have done, been able to do something creative today. Maybe enjoy the sun if it's out and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. This is Denise from Stitch by Denise.